What's going on guys, this is your boy Astrum Sensei and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 RPG tutorial. In today's video we are going to be fixing a few issues with the lock-on, I'll get to that later in a moment. But before we get started, I want to let you know that you should subscribe and like the video if you want to support my channel and help me make more of these tutorials because that would really motivate me. And also I want to special thank my precious patrons who are supporting this series and helping it continue. And also anyone who watches this series really, thank you very much. Anyway, the few issues with the lock-on we have are three actually. Uh, the first issue is when we want to lock-on, we press the lock on button and suddenly we snap so we don't want to snap when we lock on we want to slowly turn so we're gonna fix that today and the other thing is if we lock on if we go very far from the enemy we never lock off so we want to make a kind of a range so that we can lock off whenever um, we are far from the enemy and the last thing is when the enemy dies and we kill it we stay locked onto them forever so yeah we are gonna uh, gonna also fix that so let's get started oh what is that oh i think i forgot to connect something when trying to um you know fix things so i forgot about that we'll get to it later but for now we are gonna go to the bp base and there is the that part where in the previous video we added the uh charge attacks i actually disconnected them and kept only the normal attacks because you know i already have um you know i already have a button dedicated to charge at like heavy, heavier attacks and this one is a little bit clunky so i just disconnected it and kept it in its own comment so that we can use it if we want to improve on it uh, but for now this is great also we are going to be um you know organizing everything even more and adding comment for every single uh, few nodes so yeah we'll get to that later but for now we are just gonna fix the lock on so to fix the problem of when the enemy dies we stay locked on to them we are just gonna go to the on hit part we have this uh, macro dedicated to the character's death so if the where you know this part this is the part where we take away the health and if it's less than zero we play the death animation and everything happens here so yeah okay so yeah, that's it um i also added an output for it so i just pressed the uh add button made it an exec and called it true so that we can continue if we want to actually we don't want to so i'm just gonna disable it like this so now what we need to do is we already added this lock on um thing but it didn't work because uh, we are not telling it what to lock off or who the target is so we are just gonna delete it and do it um, before the set movement on so after the enemy dies you know after the health is zero the first thing we want to do is lock off so that you know you can lock on to the next enemy so i'm just gonna type in cast to bp base and then after that from as bp base we are gonna lock on and make sure that it's false here and lock on to is nothing but you know you can if you have more than one enemy i think you can add the nearest enemy we'll give it a try in a moment after we make sure this works so just connect this one to the lock on and lock on continues everything there is one more thing i just noticed oh wait i forgot something okay uh, there is this object part and the one we want to use is actually um, this one the actor so to do that we are just gonna select this inputs um, node and for the inputs here we are gonna add a uh, new one and I'm gonna call it actor and the type will also be an actor like this object reference and over here in the on head we want to make sure that the actor is this same actor so 
Instead of connecting it here, I'm going to add a reroute node and connect it like this so that, you know, it's not very messy. You know, it's still very messy and we're going to organize it and make sure that it looks much better. But for now, this is okay for this video. We want to make sure that it's a quick video. So over here on the object, just connect it to the actor like this. And that way it should be fixed, I think. So let's hit play and give it a try. So we lock on, we kill the enemy. And we are no longer locked on and we can go on our way. And yeah, this is great. This is perfect. I actually had a lot of trouble um, fixing this and the solution turned out to be just to do the cast thing. I know, very stupid. Actually, let's give it a try with more than one enemy to see if it locks on to the next enemy when this one dies. So we are going to duplicate the enemy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, inside of here... Inside of here, lock on to... We are going to choose the next nearest enemy. So we'll give it a try. I'm not sure if it will work. Okay, we lock on to the first one. No, they are fighting. Okay. So we killed that one. And no, we aren't locked on to the next one. Yeah, we'll have to figure that one out later. There is still another option, which is get nearest enemy. Uh, this one. I'm not sure. Does it work? Okay, let's give it a try. Uh... Okay, let's just not do it. This wasn't planned in the video, so I'm just not gonna do it. Yeah, we are gonna now fix the snapping issue. And to do that, we have to go to the event graph, to this lock on rotation part, and enter it. So over here, we have a few things we are gonna fix. We are gonna fix the uh, snapping lock on. So when we lock on, we want it to move smoothly, to rotate smoothly. So to do that, we are gonna fix something and also one more thing we are going to do the lock on range or distance and yeah we're going to do that now so to get started we have this um yeah first we are going to fix the snapping so let's do that so for this one find look at rotation we are gonna okay let's connect this yeah, recombine struct pin, and that way it goes back to, you know, being one pin. And we also want to... Yeah, let's just type R interp 2 And, you know, this is what makes it smooth, based on these values. So the target is the return value of the find look at rotation. And the current is the actor location of us. Oh, sorry, the actor rotation of us. Uh, so just type in get actor rotation the target is the self and then we are gonna connect uh, yeah we are gonna split this one and connect the Z to the Z and I think everything else should be fine so um, we want to change the values here now the higher yeah we are gonna choose the Delta time the Delta time to be um, 0.4 I guess and the interrupt speed is also 0.4 you know the, the higher the faster so i think 0.4 is the sweet spot i've tried it out yeah you can see that we no longer snap we rotate when the uh, lock on happens and you know if you had like rotating blend spaces uh it would look even better because you know the foot movement would be also rotating so yeah i think that's great but uh, yeah, I think this is it for this one. Now we are going to fix the other one, which is going to be like the longest of the three fixes. So we are going to do that now. So we have the locked onto here, which is what we are locked onto. And we want to get the distance to it. So get distance to. And the other actor will be the self. So we want to get the distance from the enemy to us. And we are going to promote it to a variable. I'm going to call it lock of distance. 
I think we already had one, which is called, I don't know, lock on distance. No, we didn't. Okay. For this one, I'm going to make it public and I'm going to put it in the combat. Actually, no, let's not put it in the combat. I do have like a um, plan to put all of the editable um, variables in one, like in one single um, category. So like, yeah, this is fine for now. And we don't want to set it here. What we want to do is we want to check if it's less than or equal to actually no, just less than. So we want to check if it, if the float, if the distance is less than the lock off distance. And if it is, we're going to do a branch. Yeah. If it is, then we are going to lock off. So set locked on to be false. And we are going to connect it to the output. And also, we want to connect this branch to the is valid. But before that, we are going to set. Oh, oh, sorry. No, we didn't want to do that. We're going to get the character movement. And then we want to type in set orient rotation to movement, which is like what the entire uh, lock on thing is about. Like, the entire, um, what was it called? Yeah, the entire control scheme of the lock-on is based on this node. So if it's true or false, yeah, I think if, if it's false, then we do the strafing thing of the lock-on. So from the, from this, um, from this condition, we are going to get not boolean and place it here, connect it to this one. And one more thing we want to do is we want to also connect is not valid to the output so that, you know, whatever you're doing after the lock on rotation in the event tick just happens because, you know, if it, if it isn't connected to the output in all of them, then the next one doesn't happen. So yeah, now let's play and give it a try. Actually, I forgot to do a lock off distance, so I'm going to make it something like 750. And also, I want to. Um, yeah, I want to give it a try. Uh, yeah, I want to delete one of the enemies. Uh, they aren't set in the same party yet, I think. That's why they are fighting. We'll see about that. But yeah, if we lock onto the enemy. Okay, the lock-on no longer works. There has to be something wrong, so we are going to check it out. So we go back to the lock-on rotation and we check what's wrong. Yeah, what's wrong is that the true is not connected to the set actor rotation. That's what I forgot. And then if we compile and try it out and try to lock on, yeah, it works. Now we are locked on, but if we go very far, we lock off. And you know, we should do something about the camera so that whenever we are locked on, we can't really rotate it, kind of like Dark Souls. So yeah, we're going to do that also. As you can see, the lock on is really great now, much better than before. And I really like that it locks off automatically when the enemy dies. Uh, so yeah, that's it for the video. Uh, I think as an extra, I'm going to do something very basic. So I want to select this chair here. I know, very stupid to do level design now. But yeah, I'm going to select these chairs and add physics for them so that they can be pushed when we push them because it's really annoying when we can't push them. So let's do that very quickly. Of course, I selected the... Oh my god, that was stupid. Yeah, like this. No, nothing's... Okay, it's very hard to select things when you have a lot of particle effects. Yeah, now with all of the chairs selected, I'm gonna go to simulate physics and enable gravity. And we wanna add a weight, so mass in kilos. And I'm gonna make it something like, I don't know, 20. Of course, it's not that heavy, but um, yeah. That's how it turns out. Yeah, it's very light, so 
I know. Not really realistic. How do we reselect them? Oh my god, we can't reselect them. Okay, I'm gonna type in chair here. And select them all. Yeah, I should have done that much earlier. And the mass in kilograms, I'm gonna make it 100. I think that's like the minimum or else everything will be unrealistic. And if we kill the enemy and get rid of them. What you can also do about the enemy is that you can choose to destroy the actor. Like after adding a delay, like for 5 seconds, then destroy actor and it disappears. Or you know, you can make it however long you want, like 100 seconds. Or even more, like 5 minutes until the player leaves the area. You know, that's how it was in PS1 games. The enemies would just snap out of the game and disappear. And, you know, after a delay, so I, I think that's fine. Or, you know, you can make it so that when you leave the area, all the enemies inside are destroyed. But yeah, we're not going to focus on that now. In the next video, we are going to be adding dodging. And what else? We are going to also take a look at health again. And yeah, that's about it for now. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I really hope you, you hit the like button because it's very important and it motivates me to make more. And also subscribe if you are new to my channel. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye.